Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, on this most holy of nights, we remember when your Son, Jesus Christ, sat at table with his disciples and instituted, instituted the blessed sacrament of the altar for the salvation of all. We pray for your guidance in this act of worship, that as we celebrate these holy mysteries, our hearts may be so moved to become greater servants for you in your church and in your world, that through our work and witness, your name may be honored and glorified. For Christ's sake, amen. Proceed. Intro in number 615.
evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist with the washing of feet as we celebrate the institution of the Blessed Sacrament and our Lord's gift of the new commandment as we join with millions throughout the world to celebrate the mystery of the Holy Sacrament of the altar. Our Mass continues with the opening sentence. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we confess in our sins. May worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, you have the bell. You have to ring the bells during the glory. Continuously. Son, on the night before he suffered death, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And they sit for the ministry of the word. A reading from the word of God, written in the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided into proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. The Psalm number 116, verse 1 and verse 10 to 17.
from the Word of God written in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. I receive from the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual hymn number 304. Jesus Christ, according to St. John, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. At that time, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, 
He loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of Christ.
Jesus said in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 25b, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Do this in remembrance of me, you say, O oh Lord. But we must be honest and admit that we forget. We forget when we are busy. We forget when we are self-absorbed. We forget when we are worried. We forget for no particular reason. Lord, you have changed us to be a people of memory. But we must be honest and admit that we have failed you in this. So break the bread, spill out the wine, that in this cushy texture and sweet fragrance we may remember and live. Amen. How should we remember Christ in the Lord's Supper? by thinking about what he did and why he did it. By thinking about what he did and why he did it. According to one Bible commentary, Jesus clearly intended for the Lord's Supper to serve as a rite that would bring to mind his death in behalf of the world. However, we who tend to understand remembrance primarily as a mental activity need to understand the significance of remembrance in biblical times and terms. For example, God remembered his covenant with Israel, which led him to save Noah, his family, and the animals in the ark in Genesis 8, and to promise never again to destroy all flesh by floods, and to redeem his people from slavery in Egypt in Exodus 2, and to show compassion and to provide food. In other words, remembrance went beyond bringing something from the past to mind. Remembrance led to action, salvation action. God also called Israel to remember all that God had done for them and promised to bless them if they did and to punish them if they didn't remember in Deuteronomy 8. They were to improve their remembrance by giving up leavened bread. In the Mosaic law, leaven represents sin or corruption. In the New Testament, Jesus referred to the hypocrisy of the Pharisees as leaven. Either way, this sacrifice was to occur during Passover, so that the law of Yahweh may be in your mouth. They were to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy by not working on the Sabbath. They were to wear a fringe on their garments that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. In other words, remembrance went beyond bringing something to mind. It led to action, to a response. So when Jesus invites us to remember him through the bread and wine that we share at the Lord's table, he's calling us to something more than just bringing his death to mind. He is calling us to obedience, to true discipleship. Furthermore, the remembering has a past, a present, and a future look. We remember Christ's death, we remember that he is with us now, and we remember that he is physically coming again. Therefore, the Lord's Supper must never become a ritual or a pious habit, or it loses its significance. When we truly appreciate what Christ has done, what he's doing in our lives right now, and what he will do when he returns, the Lord's Supper takes on a profound sense of meaning, place, and purpose in our lives. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I strongly urge all of us to take time to prepare ourselves spiritually for communion because it is a sacred and significant occasion. We need to prepare our hearts to receive it in a rightful manner. 
Brian Dennert in a Faith Church blog suggests five ways we should prepare to receive communion. One, we, we should examine our hearts, searching for places where we may be following our own desires rather than God's way. This involves taking inventory of our life to see if we have disobeyed God's words, thoughts in, in words, thoughts or actions, or if we have not done what God has told us to do. The ultimate goal of this examination is not to make us feel guilty about our sin, but rather to be able to see the power of God's grace in a new way, particularly at the communion table, by seeing the guilt of our sin and how Christ erases it. Secondly, our self-examination may reveal a need to reconcile with someone we have sinned against. In the Sermon on the Mount, which we use in one of the greetings of peace, Jesus said, So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, what does it tell us to do? Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Therefore, not only should we confess our sins to God in preparation to receive Holy Communion, but we should also confess and ask for forgiveness from others whom we have sinned against. Thirdly, we are also called to forgive those who have sinned against us. Jesus teaches this idea in the Sermon on the Mount as he says in the Lord's Prayer, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. In order to experience the promise of forgiveness of sins that is found in Holy Communion, as Jesus declared in Matthew 26, 28, that the cup is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, we must forgive others. Fourth, preparing for communion should cause us to think about whether divisions exist within our church body. And if we are letting these differences get in the way of standing united in Christ, therefore there's not only the requirement for self-reflection, but for church reflection as the whole body of Christ. If you see disunity within the body of Christ, how can you rectify it? Perhaps it is through seeking reconciliation or offering forgiveness, focusing on the things that unite us or recognizing that areas of disagreement are relatively minor and should not threaten relationships. Perhaps it is in recognizing that everybody is not the same as you are and that we all have our various gifts. In these times of such strong division in our world, we see it all around us. Are you coming to communion in a spirit of unity with your fellow believers? And finally, we also need to remember the bread and wine are not for our physical needs, but are given by God to nourish us spiritually. The Catechism, which is in our Red Prayer Book, Book of Common Prayer, helpfully explains what this nourishment consists of, noting that the bread and wine served at, are served as a visible sign and pledge that we, through the Holy Spirit's work, share in his true body and blood as surely as our mouths receive these holy signs in his remembrance. And that all of his suffering and obedience are as definitely ours as if we personally had suffered and gave satisfaction for our own sins. At communion, God does something amazing taking ordinary bread and wine and using them for this extraordinary purpose, assuring us of the reality of our faith and forgiveness so that we might live as his ambassadors in this world. Jesus said 
in 1 Corinthians 11, 25b. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray we all leave here with the knowledge that communion is much more than just a small piece of bread dipped in wine. It is a powerful sign and seal of God's love for us, shown in the person and work of Jesus. May we be prepared to celebrate this truth as we continue this week by searching our hearts, asking for forgiveness, forgiving others, seeking unity with other believers, and expecting Jesus to nourish us in this holy moment. To this end, let us gratefully recall Christ's loving sacrifice for us. And may the reality that our sins are forgiven always motivate us to love and serve him as he deserves. Amen. The hymn before washing of feet, number 571.
fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you, who have been appointed, who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to come forward, that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master, but come remembering his admonition that what will be done for, us, for you is also to be done by you for others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them.
We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Offertory Hymn, number 604.
for the presentation of the offerings. Together we pray. Father, we spread this table to remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Accept all we offer you this day. Bind us together in his love and in the love he has commanded us to bring one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. in God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus, Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts, and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continuing intercession for us in heaven, and looking to his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit, and become one body in Christ, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you, and in constant communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. George, and the whole company of heaven, who share in the inheritance of your saints. With him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. spread to share in the body of Christ.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, draw near and receive his body which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We may soil the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. Communion hymn number 608.
The hymn number 610, part one. communion prayer holy god source of all love on the night of his betrayal jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loved them write this commandment in our hearts give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave his life and died for us yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Christ, crucified, draw us to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. The recessional hymn number 630.
St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 30 to 46. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so you could not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Psalm number 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And as for me, I am a worm and no worm. 
As is customary, we'll spend a few moments in silence and quiet reflection, offering our own prayers in the darkness, an old rite referred to as tenebrae.
the thirty years accomplished, which on earth he willed to see. Born for this he meets his passion, gives himself an offering free. On the cross the Lamb is lifted, bear a sacrifice to be. Where the nails and spear he suffers, vinegar and gall and reed, from his sacred body pierced, blood and water both proceed. Precious flood which all creation from the stain of death is free. Faithful cross above all others, one and only noble tree. None in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit thy pair may be. Sweetest wood and sweetest iron, sweetest weight is hung on thee. Bend, O lofty tree, thy branches, thou to rigid sinews bend. And the while the stubborn hardness, which thy birth bestowed, suspend. And the limbs of heaven's high monarch gently on thine arms extend. Praise and glory to the Father. Praise and glory to the Son. Praise and glory to the Spirit. Ever three and ever one. One in might and one in glory. While eternal ages run. Come, let us go. My betrayer is at hand. 